Hi everyone, it's Roma Fisher. Thank you for watching the program again. We got an excellent program coming. We believe that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And there are people waiting for you online if you can't wait for someone to pray for you. At the end of the program, we have live counselors on our helpline waiting to pray with you or for you. The Bible talks about, if two shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. And so we have people praying right there for you. And we want to let you know that we take all your requests and we pray for you whether you send us any requests or not. We pray for you according to the Word of God for all your needs. We pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until Jesus comes. And so we'll see you at the end of the program. We'll pray with you. The topic I'm going to talk about is turn turnarounds and breakthroughs. And uh, I, I entitled this message, God Turns the Harm the Devil Brings for Your Good. In other words, you want to make it short, harm to good. That's a better way, right? Harm to good. And so let's read here in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. I'm reading the New, New Living Translation. And here uh, Joseph is talking to his brothers. Joseph is talking to the, uh, the brothers, and he is... Uh, giving them uh, some information that they needed badly at that time. They were, they were you know, being fearful. And in a time of uh, a hard, difficult time, we need a word of encouragement if you're down. And so I believe that those that are here, those watching online, those that will watch the program, we pray for all our partners across Canada that are watching. And by the way, I want to read you a, a message that came in this morning of someone watching our program in the city this morning. But let's go ahead and read this Genesis 50, verse 20, New Living. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. And I want to read here Romans chapter 8, verse 28. In 1 Peter 5 and verse 10, to give you a foundation of what I'm talking about. And we know that God causes everything to work together for good. Of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. You know, God has purposes for us. And although we have difficulty and trials, God can take you through every trial. Never difficulty. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse, verse 10, Peter is talking here. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by the means of Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore. Isn't that how God is? He restores you. He'll support and strengthen you. Notice the end here. He will place you on a firm foundation. After you've suffered any crisis, and if you love God and if you're in Christ, God promises to put you on a firm foundation. That's how good he is. And no matter what you're having trouble with, do not give up. Do not lose heart. God's there for you. So the message I want to bring to you this morning is... Uh, as I mentioned earlier, what the devil meant for harm, God will turn it for your good. And I want to say something here. The enemy, the devil, is ever trying to bring harm to your life. He's always waiting for an opportunity to attack you and your family. He'll attack you in many ways. If he can't get to you, he'll try to get to your partner, your wife, your children. And try to get you off track and get you discouraged so that you'll, you'll quit serving God. And many people I've seen over the years and uh, ministers, when their children get attacked, they quit the church, they quit serving God, they quit the ministry. If they're attacking their finances, they quit. God didn't call you if you didn't have finances or no finances. God didn't call you. God called you. He called you before you had a wife, before you had a husband. Before you had children, God called you. He expects you to serve him, and he'll help you through it all. Pretty quiet now. 
I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm trying to help you here. You know, I always think about this, you know. And the, and the devil, he, he tried to do different things. Try to get me discouraged. But I know the call of God and God, what God called me to do was there before. And when there was no money in ministry, I knew that God called me not, not alone. He called me with, for, with other people to serve with me. And so when there's no helpers, I know that God wasn't called alone. And there's somebody coming sooner or later. I had my hope up at God. Somebody will come around and look at you. You're here this morning to help out with this ministry. So as long as we live in this world where Satan is God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, and John chapter 12, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, that the Bible says that the devil is God of this world. And over in the first John chapter 5, verse 19, he says that the devil is, is controlling different things. And you know when people say, oh, God's in control. Well, he's not in control, not, not, in, not in control of everything. He's only in control of what you give him. Are you here? And the devil, this is, we're on devil's, the devil's turf. And this world will be redeemed once when Jesus comes back and everything will be put into place. But as long as we're here, he's going to attack you. And so you have to be strong. And you have to use the gifts and the weapons that God gives you to stand strong. And he gives you his word to tell you that you're a winner. But if you don't heed the word to that, then you're going to lose. Did you know the children of Israel who were brought out of bondage and we're going to talk a little bit about them in a moment. Every child, every person that God brought out of Egypt, I'm talking about the Israelites, every one of them, God promised them, or God gave them a promised land of milk and honey to enjoy life. But not every one of those people enjoyed the promised land. Some of them died before they could ever enjoy it because the Bible says they refused to listen to God, they refused to to, to, to obey him. They refused to, to believe in him. And you can read it historically and, and find out. And because you belong to Jesus, and just because you're born again and filled with the Spirit and have a Bible, it doesn't mean that you will automatically have the, the blessings of God in your life. Because there's a devil. He's trying to get at you and try to steal from you. And so you have to fight your way through. And I'm going to show you here to stand strong. Amen? So God will protect you, and he will protect you from all harm. Here's what the Apostle Paul said over here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. It says here, Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes, just as when it came to you. Pray, too, that we'll be rescued from wicked and evil people. Good to be rescued from evil people, right? For not everyone is a believer, but the Lord is faithful. What is the Lord? He's faithful. He will strengthen you, and he will guard you from the evil one. That's why God is called, you know, he's God. He's Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd. He's the one who leads you. He's the one who protects you. He's the one who feeds you and provides for you. Thank God for, for protection. Sometimes we don't know what's going on. He protects you, and you don't even know. He said, God's never blessed me. Well, he's protected you. You're alive, aren't you? So here's what the apostle Peter said. He said this to the Jewish believers who are having a hard time. You know, when the Jewish man comes to Jesus, they lose everything. Hello? I mean, uh, if you go to, uh, over there and you preach Jesus, it, it, I mean, you, you got something coming for you. They said they can kill you. And that's what the, uh, the uh, Sanhedrin, if they had a thing, they'd kill you. So uh, <clears throat> it says here in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, it says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. Some people aren't chumming up with him. But he's not your chum. <laughs> and they're sitting in a bar laughing. 
and they think they're going to have a great time, but, you know, he's, gonna, he's there. He's waiting to wait an opportune time. He says here, he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Jesus said he comes to kill or to steal, to kill and destroy. The devil, he, the devil is like a lion in the, in the I guess, the Sahara or whatever he is, Sahara. And he, he waits for the slowest animal, the weakest one, the smallest one, and he'll get that. And he, he's waiting for you in your weakest moments so that he can come and attack you some more and tell you you're no good and nobody loves you. How many ever had that message? Nobody loves you or they're talking about you. Right? And you're no good and you'll never amount to anything. You'll never fail. And plus, you're going to die early with a lot of sickness and you'll suffer for a long time before you actually die. He'll tell you all kinds of stuff. And somebody, how many of you, you almost died and God saved you from a deathly illness? Yeah? Some of you. You know, he couldn't do it. He couldn't kill you. He had to have your cooperation. But he didn't do it. You're still here. Glory to God. Amen. So, verse 9 says, Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering. So people, when they have trouble, they say, Oh, why it has to be me? I don't have uh, any money. I'm always, uh, you know, I just got paid. I paid off my debts here. Now I've got no money for chips. <laughs> eh? You know, you just get mad because you can't have fun. Well, thank God you paid your car payment. You shouldn't have bought that car in the first place. So this has encouraged us, you know, when we got trouble and somebody else got trouble, you know, every, every Monday I to call my friends. Say, How are you doing? Oh, man, you know, in the crowds, nobody came to church, you know, and money's low. You might have to get another third job. After talking to him, I felt so good because I didn't have it as bad as him. But sometimes, you know, it's good to know that other people are suffering, not, not just you. It's good to know that other people, Peter, Peter says, Paul says that other people are suffering too. You're not the only one. Tell your neighbor, you're not the only one. So, so he, he's not just attacking you, he's attacking everybody. The ones who especially who open to him. So uh, people are going through similar trials. But God will help us through it all if we let him, if we allow him. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching the program again. You know, if you miss any of our programs, you can go to YouTube or go directly to our website. Uh, the information is right there on the screen. You can call us and write us, too. We'd like to hear from you across Canada. All our friends and partners, we pray for you regularly. And we are believing God's best for you. Hope this year is going great for you so far in this 2024. We're going to come right back and pray for you at the end of the program. And so if you can't wait, there are help partners right now online and they'll pray for you. If not, we can pray for you at the end of the program. We'll see you in a few minutes. The Spirit Alive Helpline is open during Sunday broadcasts. Counselors are available to answer your calls. Call us for prayer support and encouragement. We can also assist with partner services. You can make a donation, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually. Let us know how the program is helping you. We would love to hear from you. Call us at 807-285-9945. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together, we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. Hello, viewers and friends. Grace is at the heart of the gospel message. It is God's gift given to anyone who will receive it. Grace is not about what we do. It's about what Jesus did for us. This enlightening book by pastor and teacher Andrew Womack, Grace, the Power of the Gospel, will give you fresh insight and perspective about grace and the goodness of God. We encourage you to get a copy of Grace, the Power of the Gospel by sending a donation of any amount to Spirit Alive. When you do request your book, please include your name and full mailing address. Just mail your donation to the address on the screen or call our helpline to process your donation through credit card. Spirit Alive is 100% donor funded. It's viewers like you that help us 
share the spirit of faith across Canada. Miigwech! People are going through similar trials, but God will help us through it all if we let him, if we allow him. We're going to read about Joseph, a story in the book of Genesis that will help us understand what God will do when we stand strong and we remain faithful to him to perform whatever he wants us to do. Joseph's story is a story of great encouragement, of redemption, of how God turns sorrows into great joys and opportunity. You know, Joseph was a favorite son of Jacob, and his brothers were jealous of him. Joseph had a dream of being used of God and to have a great future. He had, something, he had some significant dreams from God, uh, or at least he had some revelation that came to God through dreams. And he told it to his parents, and he also told it to his brothers, who were even more angry at him, his brothers were, and jealous of him because of his dreams and because of what God has. You know, uh, just because you're a Christian and you share your dream with someone, it doesn't mean that person, even though he's a Christian, has the love of God in their heart, is going to be happy for you. Everybody has to learn how to use the love in them. It's not automatic that you love everybody. Everybody here has the love of God that you can overcome everything, but you, you don't always use it. But it's there. And they don't, people don't know how that, that's the, the way it is. And there's people who are sick, they have faith in their heart to overcome sickness, but they're dying of sickness. They haven't used their faith. They haven't used to employ what they have from God on the inside. And you need someone like myself to teach you. You need a pastor. You need mentors and people around you that can tell you and help you to get along. And just because there's a Bible on your table and because they're teaching everywhere on television and whatever and opportunities doesn't mean you're going you're gonna to make it just because it's there. And his brothers belittled his Joseph and made fun of him, calling him a big dreamer. You know, if God has something for you, somebody might call you a big dreamer. And uh, they'll be jealous of you. Isn't that the way it goes sometimes? People, you know, you have something good and they're intimidated by what God has given you or what kind of dreams you have. And they, they don't want you to get ahead because it tells tells them something about their own lives sometimes. Don't waste your opportunity on people like that. Get around people who, who understand the process. And also, this shows us not to reveal everything to everybody. Not everybody is ready to hear about what you're going to do. They're not there yet. They can't take it. And you have to be able to relate to certain people and use wisdom and have some discernment to who really is able to understand you. I know when I got born again, I was a, I was a wonderful Catholic, and I appreciate my Catholic upbringing, and he only brought me so far. I was not born again, although I heard catechism. At catechism classes, I went to church as a young boy, and I, had, I went to confirmation and confession and had all the sacraments. But I was 24 years old in college, and I, didn't re I realized that I didn't know Jesus Christ. I heard Billy Graham preached about Jesus coming into your heart and confessing him with your mouth and making Jesus the Lord of your life, and that's something that you do, not what the priest did for you. You become a, a child of God by you confessing him, you receiving Jesus Christ. So I prayed that day and asked Jesus Christ to come in my life. I was 24 years old in college, and I was searching for a life. I had a, at that time, my life was good. I had, wonderful, I had a wonderful, beautiful girlfriend. I had a car, a nice vehicle, Actually, had two vehicles, a nice apartment, had finished, uh, finished college, had a career, had a job, and I had wonderful friends. But on the inside of me, I was, 
hurting. I just knew something was, there's something not right. I've been sober for four years, hadn't been drinking, hadn't been doing any drugs, didn't go sleeping around. You know, the Lord helps you. Amen. He'll help you through life. And so I got, I got born again, and I went to tell my family. I went to tell my mom. I went to tell different ones. And my family and friends, they said to me, oh, you changed your religion. And they were mad at me because being a good, strong Catholic, they thought I, I became, uh, got involved with some cult. But, uh, you know, it's funny. I got born again. I became a better person. I stopped doing all those evil things, and I worked hard. I became a community volunteer. I still am. And I, I made my way in life, and yet people um, said that I was crazy, and I became a, a, a cultish, and, and, and yet I was, my life was great. You know, the man, uh, did you know the man, there's a demoniac spoken of in the fifth chapter of the book of Mark. This demoniac got... God, uh, God delivered him. He came out of us. Uh, he's living in the, among the tombs. And uh, he, he got out of his, he came into his right mind. He put on some clothes. He had no clothes to cut himself with stones, the Bible says. And he put on his clothes, and he looked good and sharp, and everybody was scared of him. It's the opposite. They should have been scared of him before even more. But when you became a Christian, they started getting afraid of you because you're, now you're born again. Here comes Roma Fisher. He's got the Bible in his hand. I met, uh, I met uh, friends, you know, uh, women, friends, men friends. And they say to me, Roma, is that really you? You know, are you, you're really, are you really a pastor? They couldn't believe what God did for me. And they're happy for me. And I don't know if anybody was jealous. Maybe somebody was, but I, I had a better life. Then I, used to, I want to just show you something here, dear friends and brothers. Here's somebody who wrote to me this morning as I walked through the doors. I just, my phone tinged and looked. It says, good morning, my friend. Just finished watching on TV. Found the channel that you're on, my friend. Thank you very much. Um, my day is better because of it. I just listened to you this morning. Take care, my beautiful uh, friend, this morning. Uh, you made my day. Somebody, you know, I was, yesterday morning I was praying in my prayer time, and I, I said, Lord, I just want to ask you, open the door for someone to the television, the program that's on here in the Thunder Bay. Open the door for those people who, are, who want to get lifted up and hear the message of faith. Here I got a friend who heard the message. I'm going to tell you there's other people listening, and I meet people every day. I, there's a lady I was going to leave here uh, to go for lunch with my friend, and uh, just before I left on Friday, I think it must have been about 12.30 or somewhere on there, and uh, the phone rang. I said, I wonder if I should hope, uh, listen, uh, you know, get this phone, <clears throat> because uh, I'm sometimes terrible with getting the phone. And so I got the phone, and, and somebody said, hey, it was very, like, frantic. I, I, my friends, you know, uh, you know, the doctor says she's going to be dying, and she's, they're going to take her to Toronto, and she's got, you know, no hope. And, and uh, I said, okay, well, what's your name, and what's going on, and all this stuff. And so I got some information, and, uh, and the Lord prompted me, just pray for her right now. Well, I didn't feel like I had any faith. But how many people know you don't have to feel like you got faith? Faith doesn't go by feelings. I said, faith doesn't go by feelings. I want to say that one more time. I want to say it over here. It says, faith doesn't go by feelings. How does it go by? It goes by faith, just by the word, acting on the word. So I prayed for her. I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we prayed. You know, and uh, she, she, after I prayed, she said to me, are oh, you that get it? That's on television? I said, yeah. He said, I watch you every Sunday. I said, good. Said, you phone me back when, this, uh, when, when the good does happen. We thank God for that. And I know, you know, uh, uh, people, you know, God made this opportunity for us to reach out. So you, you're partnering with us in reaching those people that I get to talk to. So the blessing that comes to me will go to you. 
Amen? The same thing. So I give praise. And I pray every day. I had a uh, call. I called uh, one of our partners in Saskatchewan. I want to let you know that we appreciate your partnership. Your ministry sending money to us to get across Canada to be on television. I said, we pray for you. I want to tell you that we take this very seriously. I pray for you every day. I pray for all my partners this morning. And it's amazing what happens in the prayer room that comes out of my mouth when I pray for different people. And, I, and, and because they bring in the finances and they help us and they pray for us. And I pray the blessings of God come. And I said, I want to let you know, we take this very seriously. And we pray for our partners on a regular basis. I pray for you every day. My wife prays for you. And uh, I, I think about these people because, they, you know, uh, we need to be faithful. Hi, everyone. This is Roma Fisher. Thank you again for watching the program. I want to pray with you. Uh, let's pray for you right now. If you have any kind of condition, sickness, disease, if you're going through trials or trouble, I want to pray with you. God's going to take you over the hump here. Father, I pray for every one of my friends in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for their situation. I pray for their circumstance against the circumstances that come against them. I pray for their situation in their body, their healing. Maybe they're uh, having a problem with addictions. Maybe they're having problems with fear. And no matter what it is, in the name of Jesus, anxiety issues as they turn to you. Father, I rebuke sickness and disease. I command every demonic force against them to be turned away. And God, your holy angels are around them right now and deliver them from this trial and this situation right now in the name of Jesus. You said that you'd protect us always. You're our savior, your shepherd, our defender, our healer, our deliverer. We thank you, Father, for meeting every single need. If anyone needs financial help, I pray in the name of Jesus, they'll know exactly what to do. We thank you for provision for every life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've been away from God, turn to him today and say, God, I'm coming back home and forgive me for my sins. Get back in fellowship with God. And if you've never been born again, say, Jesus, I believe you're the savior of the world. I turn from my sin. I'm coming to you with my life. I give you my heart and my life. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you're the savior of the world. Be my Lord and savior. In Jesus' name, I thank you for my salvation. Amen. We'll see you next time on Spirit Alive. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.